This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to be demonstrating how you can create this inner shadow effect using Inkscape. It creates the appearance that as if uh, like the shape is kind of uh, cut into the surface and it's casting a shadow inside of the subject here. And there's an extension within Inkscape I believe that will do this for you but the way I'm going to show you today is it's going to be a manual way of doing things where, which will give you far more control over the outcome. You'll be able to uh, determine which direction the shadow goes, how um, transparent it is, or how um, uh, how blurred it is as you see here. So uh, the way I'm going to show you, it's not too difficult and it gives you a lot more control over the, uh, the outcome of the design. So let's get started here with Inkscape. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So let's go ahead and set up our document. We'll go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to change the display units to PX for pixels. And I'm just going to turn off the uh, page border, show page border, uncheck that, and close out. And then we'll go to View. We're going to want Custom Selected, and then we'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. Open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button up here. And you're going to want Last Selected chosen from this drop-down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to use letters. I'm just going to use like the letter A instead of using here. Like in the thumbnail, I use the Inkscape logo. I'll just use the letter A. I'm just going to grab the text tool, click on the canvas, and I'm just going to use a capital A. Let um, me go to this scale, uh, the select tool and hold control and grab this arrow to scale this up. And I'm going to use a different font for this. I'm going to use the font is called, uh, I just click the text button up here. The font is called uh, Chunk 5. You could use any font you'd like, but I would suggest using a heavyweight font that's pretty thick and has a lot of, like you don't want to use a really thin font, otherwise there's really no room for you to see the shadow. So in order for this to work, uh, we're going to have to change this from a text object to just a pure path. And in order to do that, we'll go to Path, Object to Path. And now that's no longer a text object that we can edit. And now we'll just click the Ungroup button as well. So that's now, if you go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, you'll see these individual nodes here. That's now a path. So um, what we're going to do now is, let me go back to the Select tool. I'm going to make this... Um, I'm going to make this a color that's slightly darker than the background that it's on. So like a really light shade of gray. Maybe I'll make this a little darker so you can see it better. Uh, under the Fill tab and under the HSL tab, you could adjust the L column over here uh, to uh, adjust it to your liking. I think that's pretty good right there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the Squares and Rectangles tool. And I'm going to click and drag and create a rectangle going over that object. And I'm going to make that black. And I'm going to take the opacity of that and bring that down about in half. Then I'll go to the Select tool, and I'm going to click and drag over all of this. And I want to center it up on the uh, vertical axis and on the horizontal axis. And then I'm going to hold Shift and click on the black rectangle to deselect that. And we're just going to have the object here, which is the letter A selected. And with that selected, I want to duplicate that by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And then I'll hold shift on the keyboard with that selected and then click on the rectangle again and go to path difference. So now we have that rectangle with the shape of the letter A uh, punched through it like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this letter A and I'm going to duplicate that again by hitting control D on the keyboard. And I want to make this copy red and I'll just bring the opacity of this down about um, less than 50%, maybe 40% like that. And I'm going to take this black rectangle right here. This black rectangle is going to represent, it's, it's, that's going to be the object that represents the inner shadow here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And I'm just going to click and drag this down into the right a little bit. And if you notice where the black area intersects with the, uh, the red area, that's where the shadow is going to be. So if you want your shadow to be going from the top left to the, down to the bottom right, like it is here, then place the object here. If you want it going the other way, move it over here, or you can just move it over there like that. For this tutorial, I'm just going to move it down into the right like this. And once I've done that, I'm going to hold shift and click on the letter A. So we have the rectangle and the letter A selected and go to object, clip, set. And what we could do now is we could bring the opacity of that up and come over to the blur tool and just click up on that to give that a little bit of a blur. 
and you'll see that we have a shadow in there now. And uh, for this, I'm using a one point shadow. I'm gonna bring the opacity of that down a little bit. And let me zoom out a little bit by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel. And then you'll see we have our inward shadow set. Now let me show you another way you can alter this. Uh, I'm gonna click on the shadow object. Make sure you click on the shadow object itself and not the actual letter A. You'll know by this, by this stripe down here in the bottom left corner, it'll be the color of the object. So like this A is a light gray. You'll see here in the bottom left, it's a light gray. If I click on the actual shadow, it'll turn, that little stripe will be black. So once I have that uh, black stripe, this object selected, I'll go to Object, Clip, Release. And then I'll click off that to deselect everything. And what I'm going to do now is take this object, I'm going to get rid of the blur by bringing that back down to zero. And then I'll hold Shift and click on the letter A and just center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis again so it's lined up. And then I'll hold Shift and click the letter A again to deselect it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this, um, this black rectangle an outline, otherwise known as a stroke. So to do that, I'll hold shift and click on the color black. And it's going to put an outline going around the rectangle. And as you can see, it bleeds into the red area of the letter A. And once we've done that, we could hold shift, click the letter A, and go to object, clip, set. And give this a blur as well. And as you can see, what that did there was that put the shadow everywhere within the letter A instead of just coming in from one direction like that. But um, if you want it to come in from a direction, you just do it how I previously did it. So uh, that's how you can create something like that using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.